How's everybody doing today? We are starting a new show, and it's called This Week in Reselling, as you can tell. Uh, Lonnie and I are going to try a few different things, going to try to keep it new and fresh for you guys each week. It's going to be a Thursday afternoon show, and I don't know. What do you think, Lonnie? What are, you, what are we going to do today? Today, I think, hey guys, by the way, I'm Lonnie, a.k.a. Garage Flips. Um, today, my main goal is to get through this show uh, and figure out this technology we're dealing with because we I got a few moving parts here on my end to get this chat and and the little uh, image down there and stuff and just to make this work so hopefully we can just get through it like on technology wise uh, and hopefully we'll do a little show in between too I hope <laughs> uh, yeah let's uh, give some quick shout outs who's in the chat Tanya Thrifty Treasures is first Fran need more stuff uh, Dwayne Mothership Products is here. Steven Stuff Resale Killers. Maggie Doodle. Jason Kreider. D Nation. Guys, thank you for joining us. We really appreciate it. This might be a little clunky at first, but we're going to try to work through it. Yeah, John came up with this idea last week, and we haven't had a ton of time. But let me know. Let us know in the chat. Is our sound okay? Or does, is like the sound of each one of us, is it fairly balanced? We're kind of using you guys as guinea pigs. And uh, hopefully the video is good. There's not a whole lot we can do about it if it's not. But uh, just let us know if it if we look and sound okay. Hopefully we do. I can adjust the sound, the volume a little bit, but uh, the video I can't really do anything with. So do you want to kick this off with um, that new eBay shipping that you? We're reading about Lonnie. Well, no, the first thing I wanted to do, John, uh, is disagree with you for the very first topic. <laughs> but uh, no, I wanted, to, <laughs> okay. I wanted to share with you guys something that I've seen on all over Facebook this past week. And uh, I thought it was pretty hilarious. And hopefully this is going to work sharing the audio and the video. Let me go ahead. Before you do that. Yeah. Before you do that, they're saying that my audio is a lot louder than yours. Ah, okay. And that your audio is low. Okay. Well, let me fix that. And okay, that should hopefully do it. Hopefully. Let me look at a few more things here. Thanks for being patient, guys. We're still trying to work out the kinks on this thing. Yeah, it's uh I hate to use you guys as guinea pigs, but that's just what we got to do. Okay. All right. So let's, let's see if that is better. And while we're waiting, I'll go ahead and queue up that video I was talking about. So I'm going to oh, share, yeah. <laughs> share my screen. And a lot of you guys have probably seen this already, but that's okay. We'll go ahead and share it again. While he's pulling that up, uh, I'll just let you guys know a lot of what we're going to be doing on here, screen sharing, uh, different articles we find, uh, different eBay policies, all kinds of stuff. We're going to keep it fun. John, is the video playing? Yes, it is. Sweet. I'm selling to the customers. Lock it on you, Lonnie. All right. I'm buying all these products with oh so much delight. I can Lonnie, lock it on you. Find anything you could possibly want. Such ostentatious goodies that I can flaunt. Selling is service. And service is selling. Service is selling. And selling is service. Hello there, Nikki. How you doing today? wants an ulu to buy. I'll send one right over. I've got plenty in supply. Hello there, sir. I've got some news for you. Your product is coming. It'll be here by two. Service is sale. Selling is service. Selling is service. Service is 
Okay, I think that's enough, John. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can stop it. <laughs> okay. You, you know, it's kind of funny, though, that uh, just in the past couple of days that they went from – that video was not blurred out before, dude. Yeah, because you sent it to me two or three days ago, and I watched it, and none of it was blurred out. And now there's faces blurred out and things on the wall that are blurred out. Yeah, and if you if you look at it, like if you look at it on YouTube – shows up on a cringe worthy i think it's cringe worthy videos there's like three or four videos they have in this playlist uh and i don't know how many of you in the chat have seen this just look it up it's called service is selling and it is i, I thought it was pretty amazing but it will make you cringe <laughs> so <laughs> you can tell they probably filmed it like 10 15 years ago just kind of based on the clothes and stuff yeah yeah and i like you said earlier, John, the, I think the beardy guy was probably in charge of it. He looked like the cheese ball. Yeah. He was the brains of that operation. And now that it's gone viral, I think a lot of people that are in the video message him and said, you've got to blur me out, take that down <laughs> something, but I'm not going to be a part of this. Right. So I thought that'd be fun just to share that. Um, so what did you want to, what'd you want to hit on next, John? Um, so you were talking about eBay guaranteed shipping, and I honestly don't know much about it, but it sounds like you've done a little bit of research. Just a little bit. Um, just enough to like opt in. So I did want to pull that up real quick. So let me go back to the screen share. and then I'm, I'm not going to screen share this whole time, though. I promise. Let's <laughs> see. Go. Stephen Steph says about that video, they're all so horrible and bland. <laughs> That looks like a video that Steven Steph would do, though, for sure. Yeah. Th those guys. Although, theirs would probably be a lot more entertaining. I mean, theirs, I, theirs would be watchable. I love Steven Steph, but they're a little cringeworthy, too, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> That's what makes them great, though. Yeah, they're okay. They're okay. They're, they're kind of an acquired taste. Uh, all right. So, let me go over here. Okay, here we go. So we should be looking at uh, the thing on guaranteed delivery. So I just got something in my mailbox the other day on, uh, on the eBay messaging system. And basically there's two different choices you can make. And I got to this page just by searching uh, eBay guaranteed shipping. It'll get you there. It's the top link. And if you haven't done it already, if you want to, you can opt in now. And I've already opted in. There's two different things you can opt into here, John. Uh, you can either offer a handling time guarantee, which we kind of already do anyway. Like I have typically a one day handling. What do you do, John? Yeah, I do one day too. Okay. So I do, I'm doing this one uh, because as long as you meet your handling requirement, you know, you get your scan or whatever, then eBay eBay, if there is like a delay in delivery or anything like that, eBay is going to cover a coupon or whatever it is on their side. Uh, you're not you're you're not liable for it as long as you get your scan, you know. Uh, okay. So, and I, I hate to read the screen, but I'll do it real quick. It's short. By September, it kicks off September first. That's why I wanted to talk about it today. Uh, when guaranteed delivery is available for buyers, you'll need to maintain at or above seller standards. Uh, meet a same day or one day handling time. So I used to do two day handling time. I knocked everything down to one not too long ago though. Offer returns on your guaranteed listings and use eBay shipping labels. Okay, fair enough. That's the one I choose to do. The other option you can choose to do if you like is the door to door guarantee, which is the same except uh, the only two big differences there are is if you use the door-to-door -door guarantee, you're not guaranteeing when you're going to actually ship the item. You're guaranteeing personally when that item is going to arrive at your buyer's residence or, or location. Um, so, you know, if, if there's a hiccup with delivery, it's all on you. And the, you know, the, coup, the eBay coupon will actually come out of your pocket. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. And they said that this was for like, uh, larger businesses, 
that maybe do a lot of volume, maybe businesses. The, the other difference I see here is it does not say use eBay shipping labels. So maybe you have a different carrier. Um, I'm thinking that is what this is about is just, you know, for a larger business. I, cause I don't see any benefit to a small seller to guarantee the door to door. So we'll see, man. Um, I, they're supposedly going to have a way you could search by guaranteed delivery. I would be interested to see in the chat, uh, who is planning on using guaranteed delivery and who is not. And if you're not, why not? So, yeah, it seems like a nice, a really nice feature and, you know, kind of protects the seller too, from what it sounds like, as long as you're getting it out within your time frame, you're getting that scan in. Yeah. Do you think they did this um, because of how popular Amazon Prime is? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, no doubt. They, they want to be um, they They want to compete with Amazon now. And actually they put uh, on their front page. I remember about a month ago, they put something about um, get something about getting the lowest prices or, or something without having to pay a membership fee. So they were taking like a jab at, at the Amazon Prime membership thing. Yeah, I see them doing that a lot. I remember on Prime Day, Amazon Prime Day, they had something at the top of their thing and it said their Prime deal is our everyday deal. Or yeah, something. that's it. That's it. And Ronnie Hart is saying, stop telling me what to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, guys, let us know in the chat uh, who is planning on doing the guaranteed delivery or not doing the delivery. Uh, Her Gerardo says, I'm not. I'm guessing he's saying he's not planning on doing it. I work full time and can't get everything out right away. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I, I ship every single day, so I, I totally understand. Like, if I was if I had a full time job, I'd probably ship two days a week, something like that, and I would just let this kind of go by. And it it's, remains to be seen what kind of sales effect this will have. People that choose to opt in versus not, uh, it's definitely going to put more pressure on us. That's for sure. Yeah, there's that carrot now that they're dangling, you know, <laughs> if we get it out in time. But ultimately, if it provides a better buyer experience, then that's better for us. So I know I'm willing yeah. to give anything a shot. So eBay also has this image search. Um, they have not unrolled it. They haven't rolled it out just yet but they're planning on it. Um, do you know when they're supposed to be rolling that out, Lonnie? I don't. Uh, the only time I heard about it, I heard some people talking about it during the eBay open this year. Um, I know they talked about it there, but I haven't, when I did a web search, all I saw was like third party sites talking about it. So mm -hmm. I don't think eBay has released any kind of information, any kind of release date for that. Um, I, I I'm, I'm not sure, but it, it, I think it's going to be this fall, which tells me it should probably be before the holiday season, like maybe October ish, you know, mm -hmm. I guess that's going to be really nice. I mean, I don't know how well it'll work at first, but you know, if you're, if you're looking something up and you're trying to get comps and solds and all that, and you can't find a model number or whatever, like just shoot a picture of it. That is so simple. Uh, you're looking at it from the from the seller side, right? As far as that goes, and I, and I agree. I think that'll be nice. I did actually, you know what? I take it back. I saw a an advertisement on TV the other day, and it showed a lady taking a picture of a purse and then searching it. So they did. They actually did make a. Uh, duh, I can't believe I forgot that. They actually did do a, a commercial about it, uh, but they didn't really give any specifics. So I mean, they were of course focusing on the buy side of things but yeah as, mm -hmm. as sellers it should be pretty valuable too if it works right yeah do you use google image search a lot no i don't i don't use it much i mean i know how to do it it's just uh i forget about it man i'll be honest i've never used it like i don't even know how to use the google image search i i think you just 
well, I think you hit advanced search or some kind of, I don't know. I'm not sure either. I, if you play around with it, you can find it. But I mean, the, the impact on sellers and on retailers is, is what I'm kind of thinking about. Like, I think the thing that eBay was kind of stressing was that instead of having busy backgrounds, which a lot of people have, the image search is going to work better or work period uh, with a plain white or maybe a plain black background too. I'm not sure because they haven't released standards for that yet that I know of. Uh, I think that's going to be the biggest impact on us is we're going to have to clean our backgrounds up. Yeah. That might be part of the reason they want to do it too is because they want everything to be more uniform. I mean, they're clearly trying to compete with Amazon. They want to be like Amazon. And when you go to Amazon, pretty much all the pictures are just stock photos. You know, even like the used stuff, I think, is just a stock photo and it'll tell you about condition and things like that. So I think they probably want everybody to fall in line with how they're doing their photos. Yeah, I mean... I I know you can like create your own listing on Amazon if you want and then upload your own photos and stuff. Uh, I've done that before, but yeah, typically you're working off of a stock image. Uh, So it'll be interesting. I, one, one thing I was thinking about is eBay is playing up. I'll go conspiracy here for a second. eBay is playing up. Oh, look, she has that, that awesome purse click. And then, Tap, tap, I bought one too, right? That's what they're kind of focusing on. Mm-hmm. But I wonder if the target is not is really not that. But let's say I'm in Walmart and I'm about to buy, uh, I don't, whatever, golf ball cleaner, okay? And I'm like, oh, I wonder, if, I wonder if eBay has that cheaper. And then I just take a picture of it while it's sitting there on the shelf oh, wait, I can get it $10 cheaper on eBay. I'll buy it there instead. I'll bet that's what they're going after. Yeah. Yeah, you're probably right. I mean, you can do it now with the UPC code, but probably everybody doesn't realize that. No, I, um, no most people don't know that. And most people, well, no, you no, it's, it's the same app for buyers and sellers with eBay, right? So, yeah, they all have access to that. Yeah. So I don't know if you're noticing in the chat, but they are conducting an auction for you to burn your hat. Uh, how high did he get? Six dollars. Six bucks. Oh, I'm okay. I'm looking at it now. Uh, I did not consent to this. <laughs> I'm gonna be on. I'm gonna be on Mothership Products auction. Uh, sometime in October, I think late October. So I might sell the hat then. It's not gonna happen today though. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Yeah, Heart Picker says, Lonnie, how much to burn the hat? And then the bidding kicked off. And Dwayne was a high bid at $6. And Steve and Steph said, sold. And then they said, burn it. I, th- I think I paid $20 for the hat, though. So I'd at least have to make my money back. So Yeah, you at least got to make your money back. If you're going to sell that thing um, at that auction, I'll bid on that for sure. And then we're going to have some kind of death ceremony or funeral for the hat so that no one has to look at it again. You know, I got to wonder, I read a little more back on the image search thing and getting away from burning my hat. Cause I kind of like it. Um, <laughs> I was reading a little bit. Have you ever heard of hackathon before? Are you familiar? No, what's that? Okay. Basically it's a, they get like a bunch of coders together in one room and I think they have like a certain amount of time uh, to hack together. Like if it's, if we're talking software, they, they hack together a new app or a new software or something like that. If it's hardware, they'll build something and maybe they have 24 hours to accomplish all this in. Okay. Supposedly the technology that eBay is using for this image search is a result of a hackathon. So some guys, huh. yes, yeah, some software developers got together at a hackathon came up with this algorithm or this program or whatever. And then I guess they ended up selling it to eBay. (laughs) So I thought that was pretty interesting. Yeah. That's really cool. Did it say how much they sold it for? I have no idea. I I didn't search any, I didn't do any more research than that. Sorry. I didn't really have time, but if, if you guys want to know, just, you know, 
Look it up on Google. Uh, it's pretty interesting. Hackathon. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought that was neat. Um, I don't know, man. I, I just think it's weird that eBay is focusing on this when I can think of a lot of different other technologies that they could have brought to the table before this. Mm -hmm. Do you think this is actually going to be a mainstream used kind of feature? I think it will only because of how much people use their phones and they love taking pictures. I mean, Instagram and Snapchat are just ruling the world right now. And people are already taking pictures all the time. So if that's just another reason for them to take the pictures and kind of implement it with their shopping, I, th I think it might be really popular. And I'm sure Amazon's going to fall in line. They'll probably have it out very shortly after eBay. Okay, here's the only way that I could see this like really hitting the mainstream. Because it almost sounds like to me like the 3D TVs from a few years ago that never happened. You know? Yeah. I mean, they sold them, but nobody ever really used them, you know? Yeah. Here's here's where I can see the future of this going. It's not so much me taking a picture of something and then using that visual search on eBay, but what if eBay partnered with Facebook or Instagram, okay? And uh, I look at a picture of, of, or say you look, and I have a picture of my mug with my hat on, right? And I post that picture on Instagram, and there's a little bitty link on top of the hat that you could tap on, and you can just tap that and buy it on eBay. You know, it, maybe they have some kind of API where they integrate that search feature and then make it available to other apps to where all of a sudden every image that comes up in Facebook or Instagram or whoever partners with them, instantly you can just tap on it and buy it. That's where I could see maybe some value here. That would be really cool. Or, um, or maybe CNN. Obviously, they'd have to figure out partnerships, you know, with those apps or whatever. But, yeah, that's that's genius. Or maybe maybe you go to CNN and, you know, they show uh, Melania Trump, you know, and somebody wants to buy that dress that she's wearing. Boom. Tap. Buy it on eBay. It, it's all visual. It's all, you know, it's one click away from those search results. That's That might be where the power could be. That's pure speculation, though. <laughs> yeah. No, that makes that makes perfect sense. Um, it's God. That's hmm. If they could figure out a way to do it, I mean, you're talking huge, huge money. Because I mean, that would just that would like probably double or triple their sales. You know what I mean? Just that, that one click to get to that instead of having to figure out what the brand name is and all that and and everything. That's yeah, that's or or, or here, John, here's another one. What if YouTube partners with them? Okay. And I'm watching a Cincinnati picker video and I want to buy that Cincinnati Reds thing in a jig behind you. And you turned on eBay monetization on your YouTube videos. So if I buy that Cincinnati thingamajig behind you through your video, you get 10%, 5% of the sale, whatever. I mean, you could even have affiliate stuff going like that. I mean, if you really think about it, the possibilities with visual search are just like really endless. And yeah. I, here's the thing with the future though. Nobody ever knows. Nobody predicts like things like the iPhone, the iPad, uh, where YouTube has gone, nobody predicted that. So who knows? It's just speculation. Yeah. I think you're right, though. If they embrace this technology the right way, it can be just huge. Like, absolutely humongous. But like I said, I think it's, I think it's the step beyond the user actually taking a picture and searching with their app. I think it's the next implementation. Mm -hmm. beyond you know yeah so to make it as impulsive as possible yeah everybody's right now they want everything now it's got to be fast and i mean at first it was amazon prime which is two day and now there's like amazon prime now where you can get it the same day where like it'll be delivered to you in a few hours or something right 
And I, I think those, I think those kinds of, um, affiliate things, like everything on the internet, dude, is built on affiliate links. Like YouTube, YouTube is barely like they sell ads, but I don't think those ads are very, um, very effective. So this may be, could even be the start of a new internet monetization because those ads that we watch on YouTube, that's something that was built. That kind of technology was built for mass, mass media, just general audience type stuff. You know, we Uh may see some new, new advertisement style come and this, this may be part of it, but. I'm, I'm, I'm always fascinated with monetization, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mothership Products says you better start the patent process now, Lonnie. Oh, that's, I promise you, this is already all, it, I'm probably not talking about anything new here. Guarantee you that. Uh, to shift the gears just a little bit, I found this article I wanted to share with you guys. And it was actually an offer up deal so if steven <laughs> steph you're still watching this i think you guys will appreciate this they're there and i'm locked to you so when we're done with this don't let me forget to unlock okay okay all right so there was an offer up meetup and this couple was selling a motorcycle to this guy and he is test driving it and just takes off with it. I'll read the article just real quick. Uh, Pasco County, Florida deputies are looking for a man seen on video driving up with a motorcycle without paying in an exchange using the sales app offer up on Friday evening. Deputies say the suspect met the man at the Jiffy store in San Antonio to test drive a black Honda motorcycle. The meetup was arranged on offer up an app used to sell items online video shows a man taking the motorcycle for a test drive, but he never returned <laughs> the man selling the bike never got the man's name or contact info, but his <laughs> offer a profile name was Sonic knuckles. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best part of the whole thing. Oh gosh. He brought the helmet in the video with him and has a cross tattoo uh, on his inside left forearm. So he knew, like, he went to it. He's like, yeah, I'm going to have my helmet. I'm going to take this bike. <laughs> and then that's all there's going to be. That's crazy, man. It is. And, I mean, we can count the errors that were made by the seller here. Like, let, mm-hmm. let's talk about that real quick, because I think this is probably avoidable. <laughs> yeah, first off, you get his driver's license, you get something. Um, and like, obviously it wasn't a car. If it was a car, somebody else could be in the vehicle, you know, test driving it. Um, but even still, I would think somebody could ride along the back with him on the motorcycle. You know what I mean? Uh, or just follow him in the car. Wait, are you two dudes on a moped kind of guy, man? What, what is that? I'm not, but there was a female <laughs> there. Okay. So it was a husband, like it was a couple that was selling it to him. Right. I got you. Um, yeah, it, here's my question though. I mean, would you bring? Okay, so you meet up with these people, right? Or I guess they probably came to his residence. I mean, how did they get from wherever? Like the buyer, supposed buyer. How did they get there to that location? Did they walk? Yeah, that's a good question. You know, because like if I was selling a motorcycle, I would probably let somebody test ride it but I would hold their, their vehicle as collateral. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It didn't say anything about that in the article. You wonder if somebody just dropped him off and <laughs> he just walked up there to buy it. Yeah. That's pretty dumb. Pretty dumb. Scott, the bearded picker says, anyone see the article about the wife selling a signed kiss album by mistake at a yard sale for $2. Her husband worked for Gene Simmons in there was a personal inscription on it. <laughs> wow. R- Ronnie Hart, how long do you wait before they think he's not coming back? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what I want to know. Yeah. How long were they just staying there waiting? Like, oh, hour. Yeah, it's a pretty long test drive. I don't know if he's coming back or not. Honey, uh, w- when do you think Sonic Knuckles is coming back? <laughs> <laughs> 
Stephen Steph says, is it actually theft? You gave him the keys. Yeah, it's that's theft. He doesn't have the title to it. I'm sure it'll hold up, you know, if they're wanting to press charges. I, I watch uh, a few of this Knight Require Fields videos, uh, and he takes a lot of precautions on these meetups. Like, he shows up. I don't I haven't done this yet myself, but he shows up with a counterfeit pen. And he like who is this now? Uh, Knight Require Field, Required Field. I've never heard of them. Knight Require Field. Yeah, the Require Field is like a joke, right? Like you have to put something there or it'll kick it back. You know. Oh, are... I see. I see. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he he shows up with a counterfeit pen and he runs it over the money. Uh, he also like I think two or three times he sold something that was brand new in box. Like, uh, what's that expensive vacuum, John? Dyson? Yeah, Dyson. And, you know, the person there, hey, can I check it out? And they'll start to open it. And he's like, whoa, give me the money first. <laughs> and then if it's good, you know, if it's not good, I'll give it back. But it's going to be good. So let me hold the money while you open up my product, my brand new product. Because what if they open it, change their mind, and split? Now you've got, it's not sealed, right? So yeah. I mean, there's all kind of little, little things you could do to protect yourself, and one of them's not letting somebody jump on your friggin' motorcycle and ride off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Steven, Steph, I'm curious. What do you guys do to protect yourself with all these meetups? Because you guys are doing like probably as much as like ten meetups a day. Sometimes I think I've heard you say. So, what do you guys do to protect yourself? Yeah, Death Piles agrees with you, Lonnie. Said uh, they probably should have just held on to the cash before a test drive, some kind of collateral. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you're not going to – you're probably only going to do a cash-only deal on a motorcycle anyway. So, yeah, just hand over the cash, and then they take off. If they don't want to buy it, you give them the cash back. Yeah, that's that's the only way to handle that. I agree. <laughs> Steven Stuff says we are the predator. <laughs> I mean, doesn't, oh, that, gosh. doesn't the whole serial killer thing get kind of old? I mean, I, I enjoy it at first, but now it's, I mean, th this they need a new stick. You know, I mean, we all know they're not really killers. It's not really that entertaining anymore. It's kind of sick, really. You know, there's people getting murdered every day. I think it's a little insensitive. Do we know that they're not really killers? No, we don't. And, you know, there again, I should we really be promoting these guys? People go missing every day. I'm wondering if someone has cross-checked the list of missing persons in California with the customers of Stephen Steph resale killers. Uh, let's see. We meet in daylight public place. There are two of us and a Staffordshire bull terrier. That's little Jerry Seinfeld. Um, yeah, I don't think little Jerry Seinfeld is going to do anything to protect you guys. I've seen little Jerry and he doesn't look very ferocious. Flipper Joe says he shows up with a counterfeit pen and a 45 ACP. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I also, man, that's pretty good protection. Yeah. Will you take less says I've asked for ID and I've got my son to snap the license plate. That's yeah, that's smart too. I think it's, um, I think what it comes down to is most of us aren't comfortable. You have to kind of get past that. We aren't comfortable demanding, uh, things like ID or things that'll safeguard us. Cause we think, oh, that'll be, they'll think I'm being rude, but you got to kind of get past that. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and just like, there's all kind of things. Like if you're, if you're doing a meetup and like, let's say they stay in their car, right. And you get out of your car. So if they get their hands on your stuff, like, and they say, okay, let me check it out. At that point, they just hit the accelerator. They're gone. Yeah. You know, I mean, you need to, they need to get out of their car or they need to hand you the money. And, you know, it's just little simple things like that. Yeah. There's a lot of thieves out there, man. A lot of people are just, they, they know they can scam. They know they can steal and they take advantage. 
got the bearded picture picker says i've had lunch twice with john he didn't know i was his protection with a concealed 45. <laughs> that's good to know now scott thank you for telling me i know some places will have a sign like right on the door that says you know no no weapons for any reasons or whatever even if you've got a concealed carry yeah, you know, uh, had, John, I had something happen, something else happen last week, back to the picture thing. Uh -huh. I actually was taking a picture of an interesting dog costume in a, a Petco. And I was just going to send it to Tanya. It was a, uh, a taco outfit. They had a taco and they had a hot dog like outfit for your dog to wear, right? I'm like, oh, that's interesting. My wife was buying some dog food from this joint. Okay, so she was like at the back of the store getting the dog food. And I was uh -huh. up front just killing a, killing a little time. I was snapping a few pictures. The guy at the register up front, he goes, excuse me, sir, can I help you? And I'm taking the picture. I'm like, no, I'm good. I got it. I'm just taking a few pictures. And he goes, can I ask why? And I'm like, uh am I not allowed to take, he's like, I just want to know why you want the pictures. And I'm, I'm like, what's going on, dude? He said, okay, you can't take pictures in here. And, <laughs> and I was like, dude, I instantly almost, almost lost it. I did kind of lose it. I held the phone up. I said, if I can't take pictures here, why don't you come get them here? Come take them from me, buddy. And I went and got, <laughs> we left. I was all pissed off. Have you ever encountered this before where you can't take pictures? And I wonder if this eBay photo app, like if retailers are already, maybe they're already thinking along those lines. I don't know like why they had that rule there. Like maybe they don't want scanners or maybe they don't want people like checking out their prices or something. I don't know what the deal was or if there's some other reason. Have you ever run into this before? No, I don't think I have. Um, I mean, I've, have, I've, I've filmed before in different stores and I've had people give me weird looks, but I've never had somebody tell me that I, you know, can't, can't use my phone. Um, but if retail stores have that policy, they're going to go by the wayside real quick because phone usage is just going to go up and up and up and up. And you're not going to know if people are taking pictures, if they're Snapchatting, whatever it is. But I mean, it's going to be like an appendage probably within 10 years. Cell phones are, I mean, it basically is now. All right, so I got to give a shout out to Barry, the five day flipper. Uh, he is doing an auction and he says he's got some items with my name on it. So he's going to be on Dwayne's channel, Mothership Products, Saturday night. Eastern, is that right? Wait, what time did you say, John? 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. Yeah, because he changed the time recently. So go check out Mothership Products channel. He's going to have Barry on there. I will actually be at a concert Saturday night, so I'll be. I'll have to miss it, but I will uh, definitely watch the preview. What what concert is that? John Mayer with my wife Whitney. Oh, okay. So you're a John Mayer fan, huh? She's a big John Mayer fan. Okay, uh, I I actually featured a, a quote by him in a uh, video not too long ago. What was it called? Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, what was it? Where he's talking about Jessica Simpson? Because I had some Jessica Simpson perfume uh, that I picked up. What was it? Uh, he said that Jessica Simpson was sexual napalm. He, napalm, then, yeah. Yes, and I used sexual napalm as the uh, clickbait title there. And it did pretty well, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Roland Picker asked, do you guys think these new changes to eBay will make a real difference in our sales? Probably not at first. It might It might take a while. Um I feel like for the most part right now, anyways, if somebody wants something, they're going to find it, you know? Yeah. They're going to make it a little bit easier for them now with the picture and everything. But like, if, if I see just like you were saying, Lonnie, if I'm looking, if I'm scrolling through somebody's feed and I see something really cool, like a shirt, I'll just look it up. If I really want it, I'm going to find it. But what, what I think it might take a while. What about the guaranteed delivery though? I think that's the more. Um, I don't know. It's a nice feature, but I don't, I don't see it really 
moving the bar that much. What do you think? I think it depends on how they implement it. Like if they only, if they only give, you know, show that if somebody chooses to search by delivery date, then maybe not so much. But if they actually give a boost based on delivery date, it all else being equal price and et cetera, and they uh-huh. show the ones that will get delivered fastest first, well then, yeah, I could see that being a difference. Um, I think it'll also depend on how, how congested the market is for whatever item you're selling. If, if I've got the only one of these cameras available, then I don't care about that because if they want to buy this camera, they got to buy it from me. But if I'm selling, you know, if I'm selling these water bottles and there's a million other sellers, well, I better be competitive in every aspect, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, yeah, that makes perfect sense. I don't know. I mean, cause they, I don't really trust them because they've said things like free shipping fast and free and all that stuff. And just by, just, just by, you know, pe- you know, what people say that they've noticed for the most part, the free shipping doesn't make that huge of a difference in most, uh-huh. most, uh, niches. Uh, maybe, you know, some right. people think it does cause they still offer it, but a lot of people have gotten away from free shipping because they said it's not worth it. So, uh, who knows? I mean, it, it's hard to say. So I don't know if you noticed, but Night Required Field jumped in the chat and said that his ears are ringing. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, Knight, how you doing, bud? Pretty, pretty good stuff there, man. I like the way he uh, conducts his business, though. He really protects himself. I haven't seen that channel. I'm gonna have to go watch his videos. Yeah, it's it's spelled K- Knight like K N I G H T, and then space Required Field, all one word. So. Night required field. Yeah, that's a pretty cool name. Okay, let me see. We got some uh, a few other things in the chat. Somebody said that Roland Picker was due to be on Dwayne's channel this week, and he swapped with Barry. And Roland Picker says it's due to Hurricane Harvey. Is it a hurricane now? I haven't been checking it out. Apparently so. Yeah, I haven't checked either. Tommy. Tanya Thrifty Treasure says Harvey's coming for me. Oh, crap. Sorry, guys. I'm scrolling. Oh, look. Fish Picks is here. Hey, man. Hey, Brandon. What's up? And Dwayne says, uh, Mothership Products says, just another variable in the Cassini conspiracy theory. So, who knows, man? Who knows? I, I'm going to do, if it, it doesn't cost anything to do the guaranteed delivery as long as you're uh, as long as you meet your shipping deadlines anyway. So why not? Right. It's, it's yeah, going, yeah, exactly. It, it, it's going to benefit the good sellers, which is a good thing. So, yeah. Yeah. It can only help. It gives you that extra little incentive to get it out a little quicker. I mean, they are coming up with a lot of stuff that, you know, is weeding out the, the bad sellers though, from the good sellers. So, mm-hmm. and, but we all think we're good sellers, right? The, the, the one I don't like uh, that much is promoted listings. Have you ever used that? I've never used promoted listings. Yeah. So they give that free credit. Now I think it's like, gosh, somebody's gonna have to correct me. I think it might be like 30. It probably depends on your, your store level. I think it's about 30 bucks a month. Uh, no, 30 bucks a quarter. They give you free. Uh, probably hmm. you know, kind of like a drug dealer would give you a few free samples, you know, get you hooked. <laughs> yeah. That's the way they do it. I feel like you'd have to be doing a pretty good volume to make that worthwhile. You know what I mean? If you're, if you're a part-timer, you're not doing that much in sales. It might not really be worth it. Yeah. I, I just, I'm just scared or not scared, but, I just anticipate a time when the norm becomes everybody has, everybody does promoted listings to get seen. Mm-hmm. And then the guy that spends more gets seen better. But then, you know, if the baseline is everybody is doing promoted listings at that point, the sellers aren't winning. The only one winning then is eBay, you know? So <laughs> I'm not, I'm not a big fan of the promoted listings, but I'll use them if I have to. 
Uh, look, uh, Pete says just list the right ish that people want. Yeah, there's no doubt about that, Pete. Absolutely. So I got to show you something that came into my warehouse a few days ago. Okay, let's see it, bud. Um, I got to take my hat off and my headphones off, so I won't be able to talk. So you're going to just be running the show real quick. Is that all right? Yeah, that's that's cool. That's cool. I'll, I'll try and catch up. All right, I'm just going to, I'm just going to mute myself actually. Okay. Okay, Steve and Steph Resale Killers say the only... Tr Whoa, wait, hang on. Let me lock this. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That, that's your... Uh, I saw that on Instagram, John. Your Yoshi. Yoshi head. Can you hear me now? I forgot you couldn't hear me. Yeah, I, I can hear you now. Yeah, that's a Yoshi head. <laughs> that's awesome, dude. Yeah. Whitney saw it. I sent her a picture of it and she loves Yoshi and she's like, I got to have that. You've got to, you got to try to win that for me. And I'm like, Oh my God, what are we going to do with the Yoshi head? Where did you find that at a local auction? Somebody brought, no, somebody brought it in. Oh, so you had to, you had to bid on your own auction. Is that what happened? We haven't even, we haven't even sold it yet. We're going to probably put it up in a week or two, but somebody just brought it in a day or two, two ago and we're going to put it on the website. But you want to buy it, right? Whitney says she does. I don't know if she really does or not. If she wants to, you know, bid against everybody and pay the price for it, she can, but who knows how high it's going to go. You're going to, she's going to make you take like some really crappy photos of it. So it looks really bad. No, we're not doing that. <laughs> there, there will be none of that. It's going to go for its full value. That, that's hardcore. I guess that's what you have to do though. I mean, you have stuff coming in. You got to play it straight, right? Oh, yeah, I got to be fair to my consigner. I mean, I'm not going to cheat them. You know, if she wants it and she wants to pay what it sells for, then so be it. But, yeah, we're not going to do anything underhanded about it. But it's it's really funny. I took a picture of me wearing it and put it on my Instagram the other day. Okay, uh, Steve and Steph Resale Killers say we never promote. I, they're probably talking about offer up because I know there's a promote on um, – on let go for sure where you can like pay like a buck 99 or something to get at the top of the top of the board there so i'm sure that's what they're yeah about. i wonder too how many people are on there actually searching for something and it'll just match up with what you have or how many people are just like randomly scrolling through and it's like oh that looks good i don't know i don't i mean who knows they, they probably keep that kind of data like really secret because they don't want competitors to you know competitor having that information would help them maybe you know design a better app or something like that mm -hmm. i would i would guess most people sit there and just scroll through it maybe they'll go to a, a category or something and then they just you know how do you use it i search i don't buy a whole lot on there but when i do i search um but if i'm looking to actually flip something then i'm just scrolling just to kind of see what, what deals are on there. Karen Fisher uh, wants to know if we can pronounce her name right. I don't know if I, is it Karen or Corinne? I'm sure it's Karen, I think, maybe. Karen I don't know. Fisher? She says people have a problem with it, so maybe it's not. Um. I don't know. I don't know how many ways you could say it. Karen, Karine, Karine, Karin, uh, Fisher. One of those has got to be right. <laughs> hi, hi, Karen. Hi, Miss Fisher. <laughs> Night Required Field says he saves his offer up link, takes new pictures on the computer screen every weekend, and relists it, relists it fast. That's pretty cool. That's a good way to do it. Steven Seth does the same thing. They just brief the relist the fresh listing instead of paying to bump it. So yeah, it might take you a few minutes, but you're saving two bucks. Okay. Karen, uh, I'm sorry. Car Ren. Car Ren Fisher. Car Ren. Hi, Car Ren. That is a cool way to say it. Yeah, I didn't know. Chad, the golden finger picker is in the house. How you doing, Chad? 
Hey Chad, uh, the reseller six pack. I'm going to promote that while we're while we're here. Uh, is going to be on Chad Goldfinger Picker's channel this weekend. So, on Sunday. So, be sure and catch us there, guys. Yeah, Sunday, 8 o'clock Eastern. Oh, you know what? I wanted to um, I wanted to share a quick bolo uh, item for you guys. Is this a good time to do that? Yeah, of course. Okay, cool. Let me share a screen. And I want to show y'all how I first saw this um, on, I got to give a shout out to Crazy Picker Life. I first saw this keyboard on the Crazy Picker Life channel. This is a Microsoft natural keyboard. This particular one was actually in uh, new condition, uh, never used. And it, you can see it's got the split keyboard there. So it's like ergonomic or whatever. And I saw it on... Um, Crazy Picker Life's channel, they sold one for this exact same amount. And I, I'm telling you, the very next week, I saw this keyboard. So I knew to buy it. I paid five bucks for this. Sold it really quickly for 70 okay? Um, haven't seen one since. This has been, I don't know, a month and a half, two months ago. But then this past weekend, I came across this keyboard. And this one was used. It's in good use condition. The keys aren't split down the middle like that one, but it's still an ergonomic keyboard. It's a uh, Microsoft Comfort Curve 2000. And I paid a dollar or two for it, guys, and I got $30 for it. And it happened. I, I messaged John. I said, John, I've, I picked this up because of that other keyboard. Let's see how this one does. And I think probably eight hours later or so eight hours later or so uh i was sending john another message saying okay bolo confirmed it sold too so be on the lookout guys for any of these ergonomic type keyboards this is a wired keyboard a lot of you may know about these already if you don't check them out the microsoft brand for sure there's a few, there's some dell ones they don't sell quite as good so of course look them up do your comps but uh, I think I found a new niche, and I just shared it with the world, so I'm going to kill it right here. But be on the lookout for these guys. I've, I've had some, just on two things, I've had some pretty good success. Yeah, that's a really good bolo. Now, it's specifically the ergonomic, right? And not just any kind of standard keyboard. It has to be some kind of ergonomic, right? Well, I'm not going to say it, it can't be any kind of keyboard, because there's other keyboards that have value, like the ones that have the heavy mechanical switches do well, like especially the old IBM ones. And there's also some newer gaming keyboards that have the heavy mechanical switches that really go click, have a lot of travel and click, click, click when you type on them. Uh, these, these are just standard keyboards that are like made ergonomically. So, right. Um, but yeah, like a standard, just flat Dell type keyboard. Yeah, that's not going to be worth much at all. Not going to be worth fooling with unless maybe if it's new, maybe. Yeah, it seems like that's one of those things where there's going to be thousands of them that people are trying to sell, and it's just going to be hard to get a buyer for it. The Acme Guys, if you got any questions, let us know. We're going to shut this off. Uh, it's just We've been on for just about an hour, so we're going to cut this thing off. Let us know if you got any questions. Let's see. Okay, so Leisure Picker, I keep my Ergo keyboards when I find them. I use them all the time. Keep them for the replacements. Yeah, that's the thing, right? Like, I don't think there's that many keyboards actually being made now versus back then because people aren't buying desktop computers hardly anymore. I know you can buy, you know, you know aftermarket keyboards still, but... It, that market is drying up, so people looking for replacements are probably going to have to start coming. Or maybe it's somebody that used that model, and they want that exact same model again, and their other one broke, and now it's the Comfort Curve 8000 that they can only get. You know, so they'd rather... this per, Dude, this person spent, after shipping and everything, they spent like $47 for that used keyboard. Wow. 
Yeah, they <laughs> they really liked that one. I'm sure it wasn't just a random, I want an ergonomic keyboard. They wanted that model. All right, man. Did you have anything else, John? That's all I've got, man. Guys, this was fun. We really appreciate you watching. Uh, thank you for being patient with all the hiccups and everything. And we're just trying to work out the kinks of this show. It's going to get smoother, I promise. We're going to be back next week, so uh, be sure and check us out then. I, I think it went pretty well. If y'all have any uh, constructive criticism for us, if you're watching this later, uh, leave it down below, and we'll definitely consider it because, like you know, like we said, it's a brand new show, and uh, we, we we're definitely going to have some things to adjust on the fly. You never know what you're going to run into until you try it, right? Absolutely. And uh, Pete is Pete is putting out a, a bolo of his own vintage IBM. It's got a part number behind it. I'm not gonna. We're just gonna keep it for the people in the chat. We're not gonna. Uh, we're gonna keep it super secret. We're not gonna shout it out for the uh, people watching later. Look that up. They'll I'm, see it. The screencast oh, is on there. Oh, yeah, duh, man. duh. I even put it there. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yep. It's vintage IBM five six four zero five three four. I'm sure it's got to be worth a couple hundred bucks or something without even. Yeah, looking. I'm looking it up now. Wow, 250 bucks for that old clicky keyboard. That is, that's crazy, man. Yeah, thanks for that, Pete. Yeah, that, that's that's the clicky ones you want to look out for. So, thanks again for watching, guys. Appreciate y'all joining us. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks. Have a good day.